Hi everyone and welcome to our first ever Code for Kids robotics course. Today I will take you through lesson one of the four lessons of the course. Firstly, we have an introduction to discuss and explain what a robot is. You can discuss this with your learners and find out what experiences and knowledge they already have of robotics. Then you can give them a small task to connect the words to the matching parts of the robot using the draw tool. Here is a cross section of the little robot that we're going to be using and all robots have some sort of power source. They can then join a line to the power source and in this case a little battery. They usually have some sort of sensor. Every robot has a different type of sensor and they will have actuators which would be the moving parts and in our case the wheels. And then finally the robot will have a processor and that is where the code is written for the program to run its course. Then we will go on to the second tab, introducing Kip. Kip is the robot that we use at Code for Kids and he understands different commands. Kip can move, draw and turn and later on he can even change pen color. Here we see the syntax which we typically use. Kip is our object and line or move or turn or change color will be our function. Finally, within these parentheses, we have our parameter. And you can discuss all of those with the learners. The parameter, if it is a word, please remember to use speech marks or apostrophes um, either side of the word, and the numbers do not need that to run. Let's go into task zero. In task zero, we have the robot on the right-hand side. There's Kip. And on the left hand side we have the code. Task 0 says press run and see what happens. We press run and we see that Kip has now drawn a line from the square to the triangle. He turns his, he moves one, he turns his line on, he then moves two, turns his line off and moves three. The task is to get Kip to continue the line to the end at the red circle. So you're going to get your learners to carry on typing. Kip being the object, he is going to move from the triangle, he's going to move two spaces, and then Kip is going to turn. And then Kip is going to move once again three spaces. And then we can go and click on run to see if we've achieved what needs to be done. And yes we have, we've drawn right up to the red circle. Excellent. We can go on to task one. Task one, we're going to once again press run and see what happens. Right, this time we're going to get Kip to draw a line from the green circle all the way to the green triangle. So from here, the line is off, so please take note of that. We're going to need to keep to move two more spaces to go and get to that green circle. So if your children are fine with copy and pasting, you can get them to continue with that. Otherwise, you'll get them to actually type out the instructions. Kip is going to turn. Once he gets to the circle, he's going to turn left. So let's go and check our code. He's gone and he's drawn the lines to the red shapes and now he's at the, red cir the green circle. And we simply need to make sure that he is going to turn his line on, very important. And then he is going to move the spaces one, two, three, four to be in line with the triangle. He's going to turn left once again and then he will be moving one, two, to make sure that he gets to that green triangle. So we simply go and place those commands in there. And then we run to check that everything has worked out just right. Fabulous, task one is done. Moving on to task two. In task two, we continue navigating between the shapes and using the line on and off parameter. It starts to get a little bit more tricky, but don't forget there is a little hint here to turn the line on when we get to the green circle. So we're going to continue doing that. 
Let's press run and see where he ends up. He's going to go and join those shapes. And then we are going to go and join up the green shapes. So his line is off. We need to make sure that he goes and he turns left. He moves to and then he turns his code, his pen on. And there's all those lines of code. And there you have it. Task two is done. Task three. In task three, the learners are going to use the function color change. And this is a really fun task and really big challenge. He is going to be making a rainbow. And he's going to create the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So let's run again and see what Kip has already started with. He's turned his line on, he's drawn the red line. He's then moved eight spaces along and he's turned his line off. He then needs to move down to the next row, which means he needs to move right and then move one and then shift right again. He then turns his line on, changes it to orange, the next color in the rainbow, and moves those eight spaces. Once he's done that, you can ask the learners, what do you think will need to happen next? Hopefully they should come up with the fact that they need to turn his line off and move left to get him into the next line below. So you can go and get them to do that and make sure that they are in that next line below. Then we get the opportunity to now turn our pen back on and to move to change the color to yellow being the next color in the rainbow. And each time they can run and just check that they are on track. And the learners continue to do this. They can naturally copy and paste and then change the parameters according to what they would like them to do. And here is how the rainbow will finally look. Red, then orange, then yellow, moving on to green, blue, indigo, and violet. Excellent. A really fun task. Going on to task four. Let's discover what Kip is trying to say to you by following the instructions below. And in this task, we are using map coordinates. So number one says, draw a line from B2 to B8. So let's run and see where is Kip going to start. Aha, he's in B2. So we've already got that code written there. And so he's simply going to move six spaces to go and move up to that coordinate. We're going to run that and we're going to check, have we done number one? Yes, B2 up to B8. Now we need to make sure that we turn Kip's line off because the next line says draw a line from E8 to E2. So we're going to turn off. He's going to then, Kip is going to turn right. So working it out from B8 up to E8, one, two, three spaces. He will then need to turn his pen on again and to move right again and to once again move the six. We run and he is completed. Now we're going to draw a line from E5 to B5. So we need Kip to go back to E5. So we're simply going to get him to turn right twice, once and then twice, so he's going back. But don't forget, we need to turn Kip turn line off. Then he's going to turn right to go back to his space. Then we're going to get Kip to move again. Just the three spaces. We would then need to get Kip to turn his line on again. And Kip is going to move to the left. He is then going to move another three spaces. 
Let's have a look and see. Good move six, down, goes back up and crosses from E5 to B2. E5 to B5. Excellent. So now you can see that we've either made some rugby poles or the letter H. Finally, we get Kip to go and draw a line from G2 to G8. So we are going to get him to once again to turn his line off. He is going to turn around again and head back down to the bottom of the page. Naturally, your learners would do this in a different way, but it doesn't matter as long as we end up with the same result of him going from G2 to G8. So here we are, here's G2 up to G8. And once your learners have gone and drawn lines from all these specific map points, they should end up with something that looks a bit like the letter H or rugby poles and then on to the letter I. Finally, we go on to the challenge. The challenge. The learners need to write their age in digital numbers. If they're not sure what this means, they can go and look this up on Google. But for now, basically we're saying that Kip can only move left or right and forwards and backwards, but he is not moving in diagonal. So a letter, a number two, seems a little bit more complicated. Um, if your learners were to, for example, write the letter 12, this is how it will look. And that is the end of the challenge. Once the challenge is complete, then the learners are done and they have no need to worry about these config files on the right hand side. They can then go and assist their fellow peers um, and in conclusion, the aim of the course is to get the learners familiar with robotics without needing any specific hardware or expensive devices. Good luck, we hope that your robotics lesson one goes well.